This evening, uh, we're going to be looking at a very familiar passage of Scripture in Ephesians 5.18, but what I'd like to do is read from verse 1 through verse 20 of Ephesians 5. And I do want us to uh, look at the various uh, exhortations that Paul is giving to us in this section and to realize that our ability to do these things is really dependent upon uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, which is why Paul reminds them and reminds us as well that we are to be filled with the Spirit of God. So Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. Listen carefully to this. This is God's Word. Paul writes, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave Himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among saints, and there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty, that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, awake sleeper and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father." And be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. May the Lord bless His word to our hearing this evening. Now this morning, remember, we saw that our Lord Jesus Christ gave us His Spirit not only uh, to save you, not only to open uh, your eyes to His beauty and glory and to your need of Christ so that you would embrace Him, but also to equip you to do His work. What Jesus Christ did Himself while He was in this world, He did by the power of the Holy Spirit, and so He gives you His Spirit so that you would be able to do what He calls you to do as well. Uh, without the Spirit's fullness, without the filling of the Spirit, without the power of the Spirit, you really will make very little or perhaps no progress in serving the Lord because you won't want to do it strongly enough. Remember what the Spirit does, as we saw this morning, He doesn't turn you into Superman, He doesn't make you indestructible to give you the confidence to do His work, nor does He necessarily give you energy, although that would be wonderful. But what He does is He changes your heart and gives you the desire to serve Him, the desire to press forward. And as we also saw this morning, when you want something badly enough, you will pursue it until you have it. Your heart is basically what must be bent towards something. You have to have, as it were, this desire, this affection before you will reach out and seek to do something. Well, the Spirit of God gives you that want to. 
Now, it shouldn't surprise us that the Lord is looking for this kind of a person because these are the ones who are actually going to carry out His will. They're going to go beyond uh, desiring it, actually to doing it. The more you have the Spirit's influence, the more you will pursue the things of the Lord and the more Jesus Christ then will be glorified. It also shouldn't come as a surprise then that the Lord commands you to be filled with His Spirit so that you will be this kind of person. That's what He wants each one of us to be. So this evening, I want us to look at basically three things from this passage, really just from verse 18. What it means to be filled with the Spirit. Secondly, how you can know that you're filled with the Spirit. What are the effects of of, of that fullness. And finally, I want us all to be exhorted to submit to this command and to be filled. So first of all, what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? You know, sometimes we use uh, these terms uh, regarding the Holy Spirit because we see them in Scripture. I mean, this is what Paul says, be filled with the Spirit. And we might have a misconception of what that actually is. A filling seems to connote some, that the Spirit of God is some kind of spiritual liquid that can be poured into your soul that you might have more of Him or less of Him. Is that what the Spirit of God is, a spiritual liquid? No. He's not a quantity in that sense. It's not like you're having more or less of His presence. But the Spirit of God, remember, is a person a person who actually wants to have influence in your life. The Spirit wants to control you. Now, to be filled with something in Scripture means to be under its control. Paul says here, don't get drunk with wine because that will lead to dissipation, which means to recklessness, to immoral behavior. To be drunk means to be filled with alcohol, to be filled with with wine, to be under its power, uh, to have so much in your system that you basically lose your uh, self-restraint that you might otherwise have. It is to put yourself under the control of this substance, and in essence, what it does is it basically unleashes your flesh. Now, we know there's many other things that can control you as well. It doesn't isn't always going to be just some type of chemical substance or some kind of drug. Whatever fills your heart can and will control your life. For instance, the Pharisees were those whose hearts were filled with the desire for power. They loved authority. They loved recognition. And that desire is one of the reasons why they they betrayed Jesus Christ why they handed him over to the Romans for crucifixion because they didn't want to lose that authority and that influence that they had under the Roman government and Jesus could spoil all that for them. You realize that they chose against Jesus Christ. They chose to reject him in in many cases even knowing that he was the Messiah which is why Jesus warned them about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. The rich young ruler's heart, as you know, was controlled by his possessions, and so he wasn't able to let go of them when Jesus told him he needed to sell all that he had and give the proceeds to the poor and follow Jesus. He couldn't do that because he was under the control of his possessions. His heart was filled with a love for things. There there are many things that can control your heart, things that shouldn't control your heart. Bitterness, anger, fear, the things of this world. The only thing that should control you, the only thing that the Lord wants your heart to be filled with is His love, the love of Him and really His love, which we have come to know as the Spirit of God. As a matter of fact, He desires that so strongly, He commands that it be the case. Notice Paul says, be filled with the Spirit of God, which is a command. It's not an option. But you also know whenever God commands anything of you, it is always what is best for you. And if you don't see that immediately, then what you really need is more of His Spirit because the Spirit is the one who shows that to you, the one who 
proves that to you. Now, how can you get more of the Holy Spirit? Well, we've looked at this before, and we're going to look at it again tonight, maybe from a slightly different perspective. But before we do, I want us to look secondly at how you can know that you are filled with the Spirit of God, what, what those effects are, what it looks like, so that you can judge from your own experience whether you need more of His influence if you weren't already aware that you did. Now, let me begin by saying that perhaps most Christians measure their spirituality, measure the degree of the Spirit of God that they have within themselves by their own personal zeal for the Lord. They, they feel uh, zealous for Him. They, they feel like they want to do things for Him, and they do things out of that zeal. Therefore, they believe that they're filled with the Spirit of God. Well, the problem is that zeal alone isn't enough to tell. And sometimes those who think that that is the Spirit, who, who basically do what their heart is dictating to them out of that zeal, they're usually the ones who end up doing more damage to the church and to the name of Jesus Christ than just about anyone else. The ones that divide the church with their zeal, who basically wound everybody who doesn't agree with them or isn't willing to go the same direction that they believe that you should go. I think we all know people like that, and perhaps we've been like that ourselves at some point in our lives. Paul talked about the Jews themselves. Uh, if there was ever a people that was zealous for something, the Jews were. They had a zeal for God, Paul says, in Romans chapter 10, verse 2, but a zeal that was not according to knowledge. In other words, they didn't really know what it is the Lord wanted them to be. They didn't really know what, they wanted, what He wanted them to do. They thought they did, and they ran with it, but what they really did was hurt God's cause rather than help it. Well, if zeal isn't that indicator, what is how can you know that you are filled with the Spirit of God? I think the simplest way to put it is this. You can know that you are filled with the Spirit of God when you have a single heart to glorify Him. That is what you want most of all. When your love for Him is so strong that it swallows up your life in worship, in devotion to Him, in your service to Him. When you can say as the Apostle Paul that it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me and, of course, through me. Now, again, that's easy to say, but what does that look like? What, what does one experience when one has this kind of a single heart? Well, it should be very much the same as what Jesus experienced and what Jesus did and what Jesus would do, again, if He were in your situation, faced with your choices, after all, if you are a believer, He is the one who lives in you. Uh, what you do, what I do, is the best indicator of what we really are. It's not so much the good intentions we have or the good feelings that we experience, though those things certainly need to be there, but in the end, we all are really defined by what we do because we always do what it is we really want to do, really no more and no less than what we desire. And so how can you know that you're filled with the Spirit? Well, you can know by what you do, and you can also know by why you do what you do. Both of those things really need to be there. And let me give you some examples, and perhaps all of us can relate to some of these, at least at some point in our lives. I believe you can know that you're filled with the Spirit of God when you have a desire to read God's Word and really to dig into the Word, not just so you can stock your head full of knowledge of facts of various doctrines and uh, be able to quote Scripture, but that you might actually know more about Jesus Christ, and not just know more about Him, but to know Him. Let's not forget that Jesus Christ said 
This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And that that knowledge that they were referring to, that he was referring to, was not just knowing about him as though you were a biographer, but to know him in a personal relationship, to know who he is and, and what he is and what he's like. When you get into the Word of God because you really want to know Him and you want to know what honors Him so that you might do that, well, that's one indicator that you have the Spirit of God working in your heart. And, of course, the stronger that desire is, the more you have. You can know that you have the Spirit of God, uh, that, that fullness of the Spirit, when you devote yourself to Him uh, in seeking Him in prayer. You know, we often look at prayer as the, as the way in which we hand our list of things that we want to God and we say, I want you to do this for me, but do you realize that prayer is much more than that? And when you seek God simply, you know, not for the things that you want, but because you actually want Him, again, seeking to know Him, seeking to be like Him, seeking to have communion with Him because you love Him, that shows that you have the filling of the Spirit. You can know that you have this fullness when you get excited about going to public worship. You know, it's not like, well, drat, you know, <laughs> you wake up Sunday morning and you think, oh, it's Sunday. I've got to go to public worship because that's my duty. If I don't, people will think less of me. No, we should be excited about coming to worship because we love the Lord and want to express our love to Him. Because we love spending time with our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ because they are like Him and because their ministry is going to make us more like Him and we're going to be able to exercise our gifts and make our brothers and sisters more like the Lord Jesus Christ. So instead of, of you know, looking at it as something that is a burden, instead what we do is we make sure that we get to bed on time, we make sure that we've taken care of all of our business so that we can devote ourselves entirely to worshiping the Lord publicly and privately and that we can spend time with God's people. If you can do that, then you can know you're filled with the Spirit of God. You can know that you're filled with the Spirit when you keep the promises that you've made to the Lord. The Bible says the righteous man swears to his own hurt and he does not change. When you keep your promises, when you keep your vows to the Lord because you know that that's what God desires, you know that it honors Him because He tells you that that's what honors Him. It honors His name. When you can do that and be jealous for the glory of His name, then you can know that you're filled with the Spirit of God. You can know when you love your husband or you love your wife with the love that the Lord has given to you, even when they're not so lovable. You know, it's easy to love somebody when they're loving you back. Jesus said even sinners do that. But only those who have a supernatural love can love those who are unlovable. And when you can, that shows you have the Spirit of God in you. And the same, of course, applies to your brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ when you can also love them when they're not so lovable. That's an indication the Spirit of God is dwelling in your heart with a measure of power. Children, you can know that you have the fullness of the Spirit of God when you are able, and this is perhaps the most difficult thing that children have to do, even though we, we might look at that as, as former children in those same circumstances and say, oh, that's the very least of the things that we've had to face in this life. But children, when you're able cheerfully to obey your father and your mother, even when they ask you to do something that you don't necessarily want to do, but you do it because you love Jesus Christ. You can know that you're filled with the Spirit of God when you see someone in need. You see somebody who is hungry and you reach out to them to feed them. Or when you see someone who's lost, and there's plenty of people around here who are, who do not know Jesus Christ and do not know the gospel, and you reach out to them with the gospel because you know this is what your Savior would do. And it's also because that's what you want to do because your heart is moved with the same compassion that your Savior has. 
You can know that you're filled with the Spirit when you are able not to conform to this world and turn your back on it, when you're willing to stand out and identify yourself as one of the Lord's people and confess Him before others, and by doing this, sacrificing your hope of gaining maybe the popularity the, the, uh, that, that you may desire from those in this world. When you're really not concerned about what the world thinks about you, but rather what the Lord thinks about you, because you want to honor Him and gain the honor that comes from Him, the honor that He has promised. When you place value on what He has promised rather than what the world seems to promise, that's an indicator that you are filled with the Spirit. You can know when you see things as they really are, when you're not blinded by, again, the, well, what you see in the world versus what God actually tells you is the truth in His Word. When you see things the way that, that He tells you they are rather than the way the world tells you they are, when you think about the fact that hell is real, that it frightens you, and the thoughts of heaven draw you out when, when you look at the creation and you see God, you can know His Spirit is working in you with power. You can know when Jesus Christ really is precious to you, when you are offended when He is dishonored, and when you are happy when He is honored. Now, here's another way that I think shows perhaps even a greater influence of the Holy Spirit because this is probably one of the most difficult things that the Lord calls us to do, but you can know that you are filled with the Spirit when you really do care about your enemies, enough about them to pray for them and to reach out to them that they might turn from their sins, that they might know the Lord if they don't know the Lord, or that they, you might be reconciled to them if they do profess the Lord Jesus Christ. You can know that you're filled with the Spirit when you're willing to obey the Lord, no matter what it might cost you personally, even if it means you have to die for Him. You can know that you're filled with the Spirit when you're willing to humble yourself to serve other people. That's, again, a very difficult thing. And not doing it because you're hoping to be exalted, but you're doing it because you know it's right and it's what your Lord would do. These are just, again, some of the ways that you can uh, know that you are filled with the Spirit of God. There are certainly many, many other ways, but all of these simply describe what Jesus experienced. And when you have the Spirit of God in you, Christ, He's basically working to form Jesus Christ in you. And when the Spirit of God dwells in you in fullness and in power, then you're going to see much more of the image of Christ. When these desires are the strongest desires, in your heart. By the way, I should mention one other item, and that is uh, sometimes when Christians begin to see these kinds of things, uh, they begin to um, get a bit prideful. One thing that has to accompany this, of course, is humility. So when you see these desires being formed in your heart with the kind of strength we're talking about that moves you beyond just well-wishing to actually doing what the Lord calls you to do, that in spite of those desires, you recognize still your unworthiness of even the least of the Lord's mercies. When you're still humbled by your imperfections, then you can know that this comes from the Spirit of God. And the reason why I keep emphasizing that is because I've seen so many people who, you know, who believe that they have the Spirit of God, and yet in, in, in their zeal for the Lord, they basically trample over their brothers and sisters because they're not measuring up. That's really the heart of a Pharisee. It's not the heart of Christ, and it doesn't come from the Spirit of God. Those desires and that doing of His will will also be accompanied with a Christ-like humility and love for our brethren who may be weaker than we are. So we don't trample over them, but instead we do what we can to serve them and to lift them up. Now, Jesus came to give you His Spirit, 
He came to equip you to do His work. He came to make you more like Him. And that's what the Spirit of God is given for. And He commands you to be filled with the Spirit so that you might advance the kingdom of heaven when you see yourself doing then His work and advancing His kingdom and you're doing it in humility and out of love. You can know that you have the power of His Holy Spirit. By the way, I I hope as I've gone through that list, and again, many more examples could be brought, that that's desirable, that that's what you want, you see. Uh, You look at that kind of life, you look at that kind of desire, and you say, that's what I want. Well, that's going to be important as we look at this last point, which is that we are to be exhorted by this, to be filled with the Spirit of God. This isn't an option that Paul is giving to us. This is a command, but it is a a command that is based on a promise which we have seen because you need this power. But I want you to understand too that because it is a command, it means it's something that doesn't happen automatically. There is something that you must do to be filled with the Spirit of God if in fact the Lord has already saved you by His Holy Spirit. Now, you already know what you need to do. You need to use the means of grace. You need to read His Word. We've already talked about If you have, it's kind of like a, a, a virtuous circle. If you have the Spirit of God, you'll want to dig into His Word. As you dig into the Word of God to know God, then you will be strengthened even more by the Spirit of God. If you have the Spirit of God, you will want to spend time with Him in prayer. As you spend more time with Him in prayer, you will be filled with even more of the Spirit's holy influences, be more under His control. But you do need to seek the Lord in prayer specifically for the blessing that you might be filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, As we saw in our meditation, we need to ask the Lord and He will grant to us more of His Spirit. You need to sit under the preaching of the Word. I hope that, that what you've heard this evening will be a means to to help you gain more of the Spirit's influence as you not only have your minds, as it were, uh, instructed, but hopefully your heart's encouraged to seek after this blessing. You need to participate in the Lord's Supper. Again, as we saw this morning, that when we participate in it in faith, we're actually sharing or participating in the body and blood of the Lord in a spiritual sense. We are gaining what the Lord has promised us through His earthly mediation, the greatest blessing of which is the Spirit of God. We gain more of His influence. We need to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And of course, in all these things, exercising the faith which God has already given to us in order to receive more of God's Spirit, that is, by the way, the reason why the Lord wants us to be engaged in these things, is because they are going to help us grow in Christ. They are going to help us be filled with the Spirit. And along with that, you need to avoid losing the precious influence that you actually gain by using the means of grace. Every time you compromise, either on God's truth, choosing to believe something that isn't true, or when you compromise what it is that God wants you to do. Every time you do that, every time you sin against, you might say, the law of love, we also grieve and quench the Spirit who is the love of God, making His influence within us weaker. So we are to buy up this grace, as it were, using the means of grace, and at the same time, we need to hold on to it and not let it slip through our fingers by compromising with what the Lord wants us to do. And again, the more we have of the Spirit, the less we'll compromise. So hold on to that grace and don't so easily give it away. But one last thing I want us to consider, again, looking back at the things we saw which were the the fruits or the evidences that we actually uh, do have the Spirit of God dwelling in our hearts in power is to consider what a blessing it is to be filled with the Spirit and how important it is to hold on to that blessing, especially considering how difficult it is 
to live when you have so little of the Spirit. I hope you can agree with me that uh, in your own experience, the very best times of your lives have been when you have been filled the most with the Spirit of God because it's during those times that you have a greater love and you have a greater joy. Those times you, you're really more like the Lord Jesus Christ. You're thinking more like Him. You're desiring more like He would desire. You want to do the things that He would want to do and you actually do them. When that happens, when you're filled with the Spirit, there are certain things that, that come to you because of those experiences, because of those blessings. For one thing, you do have a greater trust in the Lord. You have a greater faith that what He says in His Word is true. You have a greater confidence that you belong to Him and that you do have a home in heaven and you're not so much afraid of death because you know if you die, you're going to go and be with the Lord. You, you care about others and you, you want to reach out to them and perhaps you've, you've done that and you've seen people saved. You've seen them repent and come to Christ. It's really a glorious thing to be filled with the Spirit of God. One of the Puritans basically characterized it as enjoying heaven while we're still on earth. On the other hand, you know how difficult it can be and how miserable you can be to be in the opposite condition when you don't have that trust and faith, when you're filled with anxiety and worry over everything, when you're despairing uh, well, that you're even going to, to see heaven when you're wondering whether the Bible is true or not and you're wondering whether you're a Christian or not. When that happens, your thoughts are all turned on yourself and you don't really care about anything else except yourself and your own condition. And in that kind of a situation, you know, you, you don't reach out to the people around you and, and people sometimes perish because we didn't give them the gospel, because we didn't reach out to them. So think about those two conditions, being filled with the Spirit and being, as it were, low on the Spirit, and consider which condition you would rather be in. And then do what you know you can do, what you actually must do, what you're commanded to do, to be filled with the Spirit of God. I mean, not only will your life be a blessing to live, but you will be the kind of person that the Lord is looking for, the kind of person that He can use to reach other people with the gospel that they might be saved. Well, may the Lord grant us grace to listen to this command and to submit to it that our lives would be filled with His presence and blessed and useful to Him. Amen.